What is going on, guys, and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show, the March Madness edition. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. We're within a day now of starting this year's Sweet 16 games for the 2021 March Madness tournament. So today, we're going to be breaking down some of the games, but particularly looking at which Sweet 16 sleepers have the best chance of potentially making the Final Four later on in the tournament. Um, so let's get right into it. We're actually going to start in the South region, which with what I think is one of the most intriguing games of this round, which is actually Oral Roberts versus Arkansas. Now, before we start breaking this game down, um, there's one thing to note, which is that these two teams actually have already played this year. They played back in 2020, earlier on in the college basketball season, um, and Arkansas ended up taking that one by a score of 87 to 76. But this is really before Oral Roberts really figured it out in the later part of the season, I think. Um, but you look at this game, there's some really interesting things to break down. Oral Roberts was up 10 at the half, got absolutely destroyed in the second half. Arkansas, obviously, we know they're going to put up points, put up 87 in this particular game, but actually played fairly well defensively, particularly against Max Acemas, um, who only shot 4 of 11 in this game, 11 points, and we know how big he's been so far in the two games against both Florida and Ohio State. So we're going to have to see sort of if he can figure it out um, particularly in this next game because obviously they really need him. But you look at what Max A. Smith has done over the course of this entire season, obviously averaging 24.5 points per game. And you look at Kevin O'Banner over there as well, really the one-two punch, um, I think, for Oral Roberts. And Kevin O'Banner has been playing fantastic in these first two games. Obviously, Max A. Smith, fantastic as well. And obviously, Kareem Thompson, a guy averaging under 10 points per game, has been making some big shots so far in these first two games for Oral Roberts. But you flip over, you look at Arkansas, obviously, Moses Moody, I think one of the most talented guards in the country. Obviously, Arkansas scores the ball really as good as anybody in the entire country, um, you know, play with a very fast tempo. And I just don't know, I think, with Oral Roberts only really having having two solid, solid scorers. I don't really see Oral Roberts keeping up at the same pace and scoring at the same sort of efficiency and level as we know that the Arkansas Razorbacks are going to have. Arkansas has played some pretty good games so far in the first two of the March Madness. So I'm going to say Oral Roberts does not win this game. Their Cinderella run does end here. Although I will be rooting for obviously the 15 seed to punch the ticket to the Elite Eight for the first time in tournament history. Um, we're going to move down in the bracket, go down to the Midwest. And obviously the big sleeper that a lot of people are looking at, which is Loyola Chicago. Obviously see that big sister jean story and their final four appearance that they made a couple of years ago and playing another sleeper team as well in oregon state who was a bid stealer out of their conference and both have been playing some very very good basketball so far loyola chicago obviously coming off a massive win um against a very talented illinois team it was Dasunmu, kofi coburn two really superstars when you look at sort of the entire college basketball world but cameron cameron crutwig Played sensational, had a massive double-double. Um, you look at what he's done over the course of the whole season. They got some really talented guard play as well. And obviously one of the best defensive teams in terms of defensive efficiency in the entire country. Now on the other side, we got Oregon State led by Ethan Thompson. Some really good quality guards as well. Um, they got a senior guard over there. Two guys in double-digit scoring. Um, but the one thing that I don't like about Oregon State here is Loyola Chicago does not usually have matchups, particularly in the March Madness Tournament where they actually have the better points per game and the better rated offense. Loyola Chicago actually averages more points per game than Oregon State. Um, and for that reason, I'm taking Loyola Chicago. Now, before we look at their potential Elite Eight um, matchup, we also have to break down a second sleeper team from this same region, which is Syracuse, um, who's going to be playing against a very talented Houston team. You look at Syracuse, obviously a very well-coached team and led by their superstar and Buddy Bayheim. And what a lot of people don't realize um, about Buddy Bayheim, you know, is the jump that he took in sort of his skill level from last year until this year. And people see what he's doing now in the March Madness, but what a lot of people don't realize is... Um, is how much better Buddy Bayham has gotten in terms of being able to create his own shots and really be a whole, you know, level up rather than just sort of, 
you know, a, a shooting guard and, and a sniper. He's able to create his own shots again. And that's why this Syracuse offense runs so much better than they did, um, let's say, last year. Great scoring team. Really like this Syracuse team coming off a big win against West Virginia. But you look at Houston coming off not so great um, of a game in their last round, obviously led by Quentin Grimes, I think is one of the most talented guards in the country, especially in terms of scoring-wise. Averages 18 points per game, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. Pretty active on the defensive side of the ball as well. Um, it's definitely going to be a tough matchup. Um, I would probably lean Syracuse only because Houston's coming off really a poor performance against Rutgers, and Syracuse is coming off um, a very good win against a West Virginia team who has a lot of experience and is a really, really well-coached team. I really feel the Syracuse team, but that being said, looking ahead to a potential Elite 8 matchup um, against Loyola Chicago, I love the defense, I love the story, I would take Loyola Chicago against either one of Syracuse or Houston just because of the defensive efficiency, um, and for whatever reason, their Cinderella team again, a, a great story, you want to root for them, um, and as long as they can score somewhat decently, um, I think their defense just really puts you over the edge, even against really talented scoring offenses. We saw how they shut down Illinois. I think they would do much of the same. And then the final sort of sleeper matchup that we're going to look at is UCLA versus Alabama. Now, UCLA has had such a good run so far. They had to play in the play-in game and then ended up beating Michigan State in that play-in um, and then beat BYU, a very, very talented BYU team who only lost three games um, this year other than against Gonzaga. And then they ended up beating Abilene Christian, who came off that big win against Texas. Um, now, UCLA is a very... They can score the basketball. They have some really talented players when you look at, obviously, Juzang and Yaquez. Um, but I think the real story for UCLA is the defense as well. They held Abilene Christian to only 47 points, which is absolutely sensational. They're a great defensive team, really good in defensive efficiency. It's what got them here so far. But you look on the other side, it's Alabama. And not only does Alabama have some really talented guards, led by, obviously, Jaden Shackelford um, and Herbert Jones, they're such a good team on both sides of the basketball. Played fantastic basketball this year in the SEC. I would take Alabama over UCLA, but UCLA with that defense, you never, ever know. But I just like that Alabama um, is good on both sides of the ball, and I think Alabama ends up you know, winning their... Um, their region win the east region and end up progressing into the final four so to answer sort of the whole question in the video um i think syracuse loyola chicago are probably your biggest sleepers eight seed and beyond um in terms of the sweet 16 teams and if i had to pick one sleeper to potentially make the final four it would probably be loyola chicago just because of that defense again and always love rooting for sister jean but anyways guys if you did make it to this point in the video thank you so much for watching let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below which sleeper team do you guys think is going to end up making the final four do you think that any of them are going to make the final four i want to hear all your thoughts down in the comment section below anyways guys if you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe to touchdowns to home runs for more content just like this throughout the rest of the march madness tournament as always guys thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again next time